So this is the first time I've done a speaky type video. I've been uh, influenced by Hubnut. I've been watching a lot of uh, his stuff. I'm going to be trying to show you my little van. Uh, the other videos are on uh, my playlist for the multi-truck. Multi so this is a 2009, was it 2011? A 2011 multi truck which I bought last year, and uh, it's what is called uh, sans permis, which means I can drive it on French roads without having a license. I just need to have uh, insurance. There you go. And uh, they get a lot of stick over here because they're very slow, and it seems that they've got the reputation, the cars and the trucks probably, of being driven by ex alcoholics. Who need to continue driving, working, whatever. What I do know is, is that these vans can be very expensive on the second-hand market, some of them up to about €7,000. I didn't pay that much for mine. So, hello. So it's the first time I've appeared on video properly. So my name is John. Um, I'm originally from Leicester and I've been living in France for 22 years. So I'm going to take you on a, a little tour, a quick tour of my truck because uh, we've just come back from the UK and uh, it's been uh, 10 days sitting here not doing anything and we've had a couple of issues so we're going to have a quick look at those. There we go. So let's have a quick look. So, very simple inside, very very simple, because it's automatic, uh, you've got two pedals, brake, accelerator, the accelerator is a little bit sensitive, but I've started to get used to it now, well I hope so, because I bought it last year. So, uh, you just have to be very careful and treat it with respect, you don't want to suddenly go kangarooing into, into a wall or something. So, main issues I've had with my van lately is um, starting it up. Well, obviously it's a lot warmer now because we're in uh, the springtime, and uh, you know during the winter it's quite difficult to get the preheat to um, get the engine. So it starts straight away. Well, unfortunately it doesn't, but uh, lately it seems that. Uh, it's taken me a few attempts to, to get it to start. Now it's been on preheat for a little while so it should start straight away now. Let's see. No, sod's law. No it won't. So we're going to go through the old rigmarole of preheating again. So when I say preheat you get a little symbol come up here. It tells me it's heating up. Then once the fuel gauge shows here then I can turn the ignition. No, it's not having it. So I told you I had an issue, and this morning when I I drove up to my uh, brother-in-law's house, which is just probably about a mile and a half away, if that, and I had the same problem when I came back, it wouldn't start. So I'll try again. No, it's not having it, is it? Not having it. What have I done that's caused that? Ah, perhaps it's this. That's been plugged in, but it's not connected to anything, as you can see. So, well, I don't think it will be that. It could be. Because if it's constantly plugged into the socket, perhaps that causes some power to to happen. I don't know. No, it's not having it today. Oh dear me. Have I done something? Have I not forgotten something? It's in neutral. Heating isn't on. Lights are not on. So I did that earlier. I left the lights on. No, it's not having it. Try again. This is going to be a video of me trying to start a multi-truck. 
Um, right. Please work. Ah! I just have to say please. There we go. So I started up. Give you a quick tour around the truck. So as you can hear, it's quite noisy. That's another thing that uh, people don't really like here, is because they all have the same engine, more or less. This one has a Kubota Japanese tractor engine. It shares the same engine with a lot of the cars made by Exam, who make as well this Mega. But the Mega name doesn't exist anymore. They stopped uh, using it. So the newest truck, which is called the D truck, that came out a few years back, is now an Exam. So you've got quite a low entry to get into the back. In fact, it's a very practical little thing. It's a very practical little thing for carrying things around in. Uh, I tend to use it to carry things to the recycling bins, so it's quite useful for that. There we go. So, mine is, what, getting on for eight years old now. And when I bought it, it had 81,000 kilometres. So it's quite a lot for a little thing like this. Until last uh, September, the engine blew. So I had to have the engine replaced, which is quite expensive. And uh, there we go. Up. Perhaps I ought to consider doing some soundproofing. We'll see. So I had to replace the engine on it. And it's quite an expensive business to replace the engine. I think I'll stop the engine. There we go. Nice and quiet now. So, the engine was an expensive business and I wasn't very pleased actually because I bought the truck in June and for it to suddenly go kaput just after the three year guarantee from the garage, um, you know, it was a little bit uh, annoying. So basically, um, I approached the original seller, which was a small dealership that sold various some permi vehicles, which unfortunately wasn't. Uh, I just spoke French then. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, near here. It's more towards Paris. So we're actually uh, about thirty odd kilometres from Paris. Uh, so it was. It's about uh, the garage that I bought this van from. Is about uh, probably near, approaching twenty kilometres away from here. So you know, uh, it's not exactly uh, convenient. So I had to pay for transport to have this taken on the back of a, a, a truck to the garage. And in fact, um, a new engine, uh, a new Kubota engine, is in the region of €4,000, which is very, very expensive considering uh, the price I paid for this truck. So uh, effectively, um, I was looking around at the second-hand engines that were available online and um, the chap who sold me this truck in the end did me a deal in that um, he charged me about the price of a second-hand engine to have it fitted uh, plus the engine plus the transport so in the end it turned out to be not so painful but uh, I think there was an underlying problem causing uh, a water leak which caused the engine to basically overheat um, and unfortunately it wasn't me driving at the time it was um, uh, my other half um, and she uh, obviously had a little bit of a, a panic because uh, to have white smoke coming out the bonnet and black smoke coming out the back uh, on a busy road is, is quite stressful so anyway we've got that sorted out which means that now I have a brand new engine which well it's a brand new a second hand engine sorry uh, it was brand new for me considering the old one uh, went kaput so quickly but uh, this second hand engine had 27,000 kilometers on it so slightly better slightly better which makes um, makes the, the, this van uh, a little newer I suppose 
Already the bodywork wasn't too bad, um, but we just got this starting issue. We've also got an issue, or had an issue, with the gears. Uh, it seems to be okay today. Yesterday, if I turn the um, ignition on, so we can see what we're doing. So yesterday, um, I couldn't get neutral for some reason. So the gear stick's very simple. Uh, you push it. It's simple now. It's locked. <laughs> you push it forward to get drive. Then you push it back and out to get reverse. And then to go back into neutral, you push it in and let go, and it should go into neutral. And there we are. We're in neutral. So drive. Oh, it's a reflection there. I can't see. Up. Oh, drive. Neutral. Reverse. I don't really like this gear stick because I, I feel like it's a bit cumbersome but also very fragile and I'm expecting something to break at some point. So yeah, well I suppose it's, uh, it does its job and we finally have neutral, which is good. So moving on to things I need to do on the van um, and probably I'll do videos of the things I'm doing as I go along. Not that the things are that interesting, it's mainly the bodywork. I've got a few little issues, but nothing that's really serious because I can still use the van. Okay, but uh, you know, it's, it doesn't stop it from going, it's just cosmetic more than anything. So we've got things like the, the seal on the top of the door is a little bit loose, to say the least, and let's water in. I also have a problem with the fact that, uh, I'll show you in a bit actually, because it'd be easier if I close the door, but water getting into the actual cab uh, of the van. Um, we've got a little problem with this panel. Here is a little bit loose, mainly at the bottom. I'll kick it in my foot. There you go, you can see it's quite, well, I think the whole door's moving, but the actual panel is, take it, take it for me, quite loose at the bottom here. Hang on, let's see if I zoom in and move that, you can see that moves. And unfortunately, Exam, uh, when they built these um, Sompermi vehicles, they don't tend to use a lot of bolts, they tend to use a lot of glue. So the doors are basically a metal frame, um, quite a substantial metal frame inside there, inside that panel. And, well, the inside panel and the outside panel are glued together. So basically, I've got to find some way of being able to re-glue the various bits around there and probably re-glue that. I don't see the point in getting a new seal. Uh, it just needs reattaching. But I think once the door's secured, we should be okay. So another issue, which I can't really repair very easily, is the fact that I have to open the passenger side door from the inside, which, is annoying sometimes because when I take my daughter to school, she has to wait for me to open uh, the door from the inside so she can get in. But I guess there could be worse things. At least I can actually open the door and I can lock it from the inside. The issue is I can't lock it from the outside. Uh, for some reason the lock was working when I bought the van and now it doesn't work. And you can see that there's probably been an issue like this before because when I bought it, somebody had cut out a nice big rectangle of plastic there I think there's plastic behind it still I'm not sure but uh, probably there was a problem with the the latch there or something I don't know but that's a, a little problem and um, what else what else what else well the other thing is that if we look at the fuel filler cap you'll see there's a big hole here so I need to fill that in, or well, cut that bit of plastic off. Oops, I cut my finger then. Uh, cut that bit of plastic off and then refill it. And I think it's starting to split there, I can see. So you've got these little things here, this little split there. I've got a little scratch on the door. Um, the front has a chunk missing out of it. Well, obviously they've driven over something previous one has driven over something and gone bang and took out a chunk of plastic but these little things 
And the main thing I need to do is actually paint these bars um, because they, well this side's not too bad. It's mainly at the front, move the door. You know, it's a bit rusty there. You see these little pock marks. I'd started to sand it last year before the engine went kaput and I had to stop and then the weather got so bad that I didn't bother to to carry on really. It wasn't really worth it so I couldn't paint. So, you know, you've got this end of bar here. I found a piece of plastic to put on the end, like the others. You see a bit of plastic there. So I found a bit of plastic to pull over the end there. But basically these bars need repainting. I mean, pretty soon, because they're starting to rust, especially as I rubbed them down last year a little bit, and it, it seems to have weakened the, the paint somewhat. So that's another thing I need to do. I've also got to repaint the hubcaps. Now I've bought some special paint and varnish from uh, Exam to actually redo the uh, hubcaps which are all plastic, obviously. Everything's plastic on this van, or fiberglass. So I've got that to do. Um, what else, what else, what else? There's nothing else I can think of, really. Um, oh yes, uh, I need to look at these pins on here, on the hinges here, because there's a bit missing. It's like that on that side, and there's another one at the bottom there. Well, that's not that's okay I think it's just that side there so it's a case of replacing the hinge and getting some new rubber stoppers because they're perishing and falling off and as you can see you can see a trace of the rubber just here okay it'll be a lot better if I can replace those um, what I'd like to do as well actually is on the roof put some sort of ventilation because in fact the inside is very smelly um, let's get my key. I left the ignition on, that's very clever, that's not really useful for the battery. So, just, uh, there we go. Let's go inside here. I don't know whether it's going to be able to actually film very well in there, but uh, you can see all the mess that's in there for, for once. Um, yeah, I need to do the plywood flooring inside uh, as well. It's all fiberglass in the back end here. Or rather, I think this is this here is fiberglass, and this here is probably PVC or something like that. So, I need to put some plywood in just uh, around here, and I'll get rid of this canvas thing. Um, that's a dog basket there for, well, from our old dog who sadly when we came back from the UK uh, wasn't in a very good way and sadly she's no longer with us so you know that's another thing I need to get rid of because I'm not going to be able to go dog walking now. I've got no dog so anyway. Life goes on I'm afraid. So, yes, I need to do all the inside, give it a little clean. It used to belong to a bakery, so I presume they used to carry baguettes and cakes and things in there. I wouldn't want to myself because it is a bit dirty, but um, one careful at a bakery. Oh, yeah, something's gone out of focus. Oh, it's better. There we go. So I'd like to get some ventilation done on there. And then one day, probably another time, when I've not got all the bits to do on the bodywork, I'd like to put on the side here um, something for my English lessons, because I teach English here in France. And the idea is to use this van to be able to get to students in the local area and teach them English. At the moment they come to my house well, quite a few students have come for classes but it would be nice to get some free advertising on the side of this big white area on the side of the van there we go so we'll bring this video to an end please subscribe if you feel you must because this is the very first video I've done where I'm talking quite a bit probably a bit too much I don't know you have to tell me 
but uh, I thought it might be a good idea to do a video now and again of my van. These vans are not really, really common in France, and I know they're even less common in, in the UK, so it might be interesting to, to see what's, what's involved in owning one. So, I'll say goodbye for now, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.